Good morning and welcome again to the Cannon County Chamber Connection. And of course, this show is brought to you every month by DTC, and we always appreciate their input. They give us an opportunity to showcase Cannon County, all of the events, the organizations that make it run and put on these events. And we're always appreciative to all of them. Our May events were great. We had the good old days. We had a townwide yard sale, which was amazing. Um, the Beach Boys tribute at the Art Center, um, that and Shake, Rattle and Roll both sold out. The Cannon County Walking Horse Association had their trail ride. We had a mule show. I mean, come on, what more can you want? We got it all right here. I do have some guests with us today, and um, one is to my right, and that is Veranda. Miranda Vogler. I always want to call her something else, and I don't know why, but she is with the Community for Animals, right? Uh huh. Yes, ma'am. What exactly do you do? Um, we are a uh, we're a five hundred one c nonprofit. Um, we take we are a support system for companion animals here in Cannon County. Um, we uh, do two different programs that are our big programs, and that would be um, we have a spay and neuter program. Um, for low income, and then we also have um, a uh, we have a rescue that we take in dogs and cats. Um, we started in 2015. Um, just a group of us did, um, and just saw a need for uh, companion animals here in Canyon County. Okay, how many animals do you own? Like personally, yeah. Uh, yeah well, I don't want to say on camera. <laughs> I'm in trouble. But um, we we rescued um, so far this year. Uh, we we're about since 2015. We're um, on schedule to do about 200 animals a year. Um, and right now, as of 2018, we've done 50. Uh, we've done 61 dogs and 37 cats. Now this one of the reasons for this is. We don't have an animal shelter here per se. Mm -hmm. You know, that takes, uh, many groups have tried to start one and that takes a lot more than what you realize mm -hmm. uh, to get that started and to keep it going because sometimes volunteers mean well, but they have a tendency to kind of fade by the wayside. Well, if you have a place full of animals, you've got to have food and help and You've got to be able to count on them. So I, I have to give Miranda and the group that's with her credit because you've been with this for a while now, haven't you? Uh, yes, ma'am. I've, I've personally done a short mountain dog rescue for 10 years. Um, that's just the dogs that I have in my home for available for adoption. And then in 2015, we started this just to, um, you know, a lot of people came to me and said, if you started a group, you know, I would help, you know, I'd volunteer and try to figure something out. And, you know, I never... A shelter would be fantastic if you look at the surrounding counties and what they're doing. Um, in Lebanon, there's New Leash for Life. Um, for In uh, DeKalb, they just built a brand new um, shelter with the Animal Coalition, and that is fantastic what they've accomplished. Um, and then, of course, in Murfreesboro, we have PAWS, which is um, a government uh, facility, but you know this—they're not euthanizing for space anymore, which is a fantastic effort. So, I just felt like if we didn't um, ha ever, you know, the, the idea of a shelter would never come to be. What else can we do? So, I wanted to break open the problem and look at every possible scenario to fix it. Right, and and yeah. you do send some animals to other states, do you not? That oh yeah, get adopted. Yeah, they. Um, we. Uh, my rescue partner is. Um, her name's Missy. She um, sends dogs up north, and she has a network up there that um, you know is is fantastic. Um, we don't have time to wait we're, because of our space. You know, we're just foster home volunteer based. Right. Um, we don't have time to wait for somebody to want the dog when they're act when the rescues up north will have somebody waiting for it up there. So their spay and neuter laws are different, and that's why you know that's what we have to do before we even talk a shelter before we even um, talk about other animal rescues come in we have got to have spay and neuter completely in this area it's got to happen um, and so that's why grant wise um, I write a lot of grants for spay and neuter monies here to help people with the cost of it and I think that will be the foundation of anything else we do Beasley's animal uh, clinic in Murfreesboro will also do spay and, and neutering and they will do it 
uh, for some elderly people mm -hmm. on a cut rate basis. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and then there's Paul's in McMinnville as well. Um, spay and neuter. Support your local uh, spay and neuter clinic. Support your vets. Um, you know the veterinarians here in Woodbury are fantastic. Um, you know it's a, a spay and neuter is cheaper than a litter of puppies mm -hmm. because the ripple effect of those litter of puppies. You can call me and I can pick them up. But the ripple effect of what that ha what happens is I have to turn away other dogs and I don't. You know. So if we could just proactively say, this is what this community needs to do, you know, that would, that would be a lot of the solution. You know, I live uh, out kind of in the country, and uh, I think there's a sign on my road somewhere that says, drop your <laughs> unwanted animals here, mm -hmm. because every dog that we have, except for the one we have now, and one that I had as from my daughter, her German Shepherd had a litter, and I took one of them, have been dogs, and my neighbors likewise, mm -hmm. have been dogs that people just dropped. Mm -hmm. And yeah. some of them, the last one I had was a blue healer, mm -hmm. full-blooded, great dog, and yeah. never did find a home for it, so she stayed with us. She was happy. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. Um, primarily, too, what happens is, um, I don't. You know, in life, in general, you want to help your fellow man. You want you want to make it easier. And the amount of stress and anxiety that stray animals can put on a community is is huge. And so, to help your neighbor, what I you know, to get rid of the um, stress and anxiety that comes with those dropped off dogs and cats, um, I think helps the community as a whole. And that's what I want to do is um, you know help the people of the community um, so they don't you know they have the dogs that they have wanted instead of um, having the stress and anxiety of the monies and you know the right. you know the, the space and all that the, all those things well I'll tell you cats are worse than dogs because yeah. I had at one time two cats that were mine okay these cats from all over started coming there well they I didn't know whose cats they were <laughs> They all had baby. I had 20 cats at one time, mm -hmm. and I thought, these aren't my cats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, they ended up my yeah. cats, yeah. and my original cats moved off. I don't blame them. I felt like moving off. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, and you that's weren't the thing. The, you weren't called the old cat lady. No, I yeah. wasn't called the old I anything. Called well, I know you would have. <laughs> I, I wear that with pride. I am a crazy cat lady. I wear it with pride. No, he said, he said old. I wasn't called old anything. Oh, I'm sorry. So. <laughs> but anyway... You provide a needed service. I, mm -hmm. I will say that because got the wildlife, you got the old wildlife officer <laughs> over here. I'm over here. And yeah, I'll take he that. sees <laughs> all of this. He yeah. gets calls for animals. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a bunch of them out there running around mm -hmm. and just taking them and dumping them somewhere. That may get rid of your problem. <laughs> yeah, and it's putting it <laughs> on that's others. That's not really the best way to go about this because yeah. some of these dogs just hang out wherever they can. We have coyotes now, mm -hmm. and a lot of them get together, so then you've got a mixture of I don't know what. Yeah, so. That's right. Yeah. That's and that and that's the thing too is the health of the animals is very poor. Um, I you know the and I've seen atrocities in this county that I shouldn't have should ever see. And so um, you know what they dump the dog thinking okay the neighbor's going to take care of it. When that neighbor doesn't take care of it, I've seen what happens and it's 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 absolutely heartbreaking to see that. So um, you know that's if I think dogs are super loyal and I think if we can just spread the idea that we need to be loyal to them. You know, if you move, if something happens, um, you know, just don't automatically just want to rehome your dog because they're super loyal to us and they deserve the same. They really are. Yeah. They and really I, I've are. seen what what people don't realize is, um, you know, when, I, when you walk away after if you've surrendered your dog and you walk away, I see what the dog does. And that it's a bond that you, you're not seeing, you know. And so I want to put that out there to people. You know, I understand circumstances happen and you need help, and that's why I want to be here. But the loyalty needs to be upped a little bit, I think. So. 
There you go. Um, Preaching my sermon. Yes. Uh, before you, <laughs> yeah, I could talk about this all day, by the way. I can go on and on. So. <laughs> before you leave, Miranda, I know we've semi-swapped information. Mm -hmm. I'll send you a text. Uh, I have a contact that works for the Dones Dog Food Company. Mm -hmm. in, oh, awesome. In, well, they've got a plant in Lebanon and also, I guess, a distribution facility in Murfreesboro. Uh, very good friend of mine. He's over shipping and inventory. Uh, I might be able to have contact to work. It's... They they can't ship out dog food that's or cat food that's it's still good within the date, but as far as the shipping date, they can't ship it and have it at a store. Uh, but I have talked with him on occasion, and he might be able to come up with some for that's a 501c awesome. to yeah. to slide some on the side. May have to take a larger quantity than you might think, but it'd be available. So that's awesome. That's I'll, great. I'll swap you can always use dog food. Yeah, you know, and, and as Ms. Carolyn said, I get multiple phone calls. I am the wildlife officer for the county, but I do get multiple calls for cats and dogs. You know, what do I do? And in the past, I didn't have uh, mm -hmm. didn't have a contact, so all I did Absolutely. with Miss Sue, she moved away. But I'm thankful to be able to get your information. Yeah, so we well, thank you. We can work together. Absolutely, it's all about working together. I'm open to anything. Um, you can go to www.canningcountycommunityforanimals.org. Um, there's a thing just. Put your name in, your phone number, what you want to talk about, if you'd like to help at all. I'm always available for that. I'm wide open. So, um, you know, if you want to get involved, if you want to foster, if you want to adopt, um, all those things. So. And you have all breeds, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got a puppy yesterday, and so I got a little terrier. Um, and, of course, I've got cats. Um, you know, I'd like to up the number of cats I can do, but um, without foster homes, it's going to be kind of hard. So if you'd like to foster cats or kittens or bottle feed kittens, just let me know. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been there and done that, too. Uh-huh. About every three hours. I just had a baby, so I had a human baby, and that's every two hours, and those kittens are every three Don't hours. Don't tell me you yet. On, if you go on schedule, you're in pretty good shape, but other than that, no. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me you had one in one arm and one Shoot. in the other. It's almost that way. It's almost. It's getting there, so. <laughs> well, Miranda, like I say, I think what you do is great, but Thank I you. know you have another appointment. Yeah, I got to go pick up a dog at the vet, <laughs> so. There you go. Um. Hey, what more could you ask? You live in Cannon County, you got an animal you don't want or some that you have to get rid of for some reason. Sometimes animals are dumped on us and we can't take care of them for whatever reason. So you can always call Miranda and surely she can find you some help somewhere. So thank we you. thank you for yes, being well, on here. Well, thank you for okay? having me. This was great. You can thank just you. go ahead and slide on thank out. Thank you. We'll get Lois to slide over here. All right. <laughs> a little bit. Okay, Lois, we'll go ahead because I know I called you out of the garden at the last minute. <laughs> yes, I was working my tomatoes. And um, we'll go ahead and talk to you. All right. We're coming up on the 80th Woodbury Lions Club one night walking horse show, right? Right. Big thing for Cannon County. Um, always on the first Saturday in July, which will make it the 7th of July this year. And I know I went to a board meeting of the Lions Club the other night, and of course, plans were being made in all aspects. But Lois, I think, has been, well, I won't say you've been with that for 80 years. <laughs> it seems <laughs> but like you've it. been, I'm sure it does. It, you've been doing this for a long time, Lois. I really have. And we have box seats, do we not? We do. They're $75 each, and they have six chairs in them, and we still have some available if anyone would like to to get one. This is a big show. But, yes, you can it call is. me at 615-542-1858 or mail a check for $75 made payable to the Woodbury Lions Club and mail it to me at 208 College Street. There they're, you are. And if you didn't get all free. that information, call the chamber right. and I'll give it to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, uh, what are some of the other activities that we have with that? I know people come for the country ham sandwiches. Yes, that's a big plus, the sandwiches. And but we have all kinds of food. Oh, yeah. And fried pies, fried ice pies. cream. Right. Homemade. Now, where is this going to be occurring now? At yeah. the Horse Show <laughs> Arena in Woodbury. Oh, you're talking food now, so, you know, food and horses together come it's on. It's all oh, yes, there. It, it, it all sure goes is. together. <laughs> and listen, fried pies, I think last year we may have had 75 to 80. I don't know, but 
I can sell those by the boxfuls. I mean, people come in and they, you don't ever have to worry about getting rid of them. I don't care how many you have because they will sell. The ice cream is a big seller, the country ham sandwiches, plus they have regular hamburgers and hot dogs and french fries, and but all of the desserts are homemade. I have calls all the time about when they're calling about box seats, they'll say, are we having country ham sandwiches again? <laughs> sure we will. They've always had I them, know, haven't they? they? do. That's one of the hardest jobs that you can have. Uh, right there is working the concession stand. I say that, but I've never worked any of the gates or anything, so uh, you may, <clears throat> those may present more problems than what I'm aware of. Right, Lois? You've worked yeah, about everywhere. I've worked every, every place, I think. <laughs> 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 but the um, horses are great, and these are some of the horses that you'll see at the celebration. These aren't just your ones that go out there, you know, and pick up off the street. These are the main ones that you want yeah. to see. These They're are the high steppers. Right. Right. And um, what time, the gates open right at 4 o'clock? Um, they start coming in by 2.30, but the show starts at 5 o'clock. Um, now, there are bleacher seats, too. Yes, we have bleacher seats. If you don't have box seats, we have and it's amazing, it always amazes me how many people stand they during do. the whole show. And a lot of people bring their own chair and, right. and sets it up early that morning. Um, we really have a big show. We're going to have 38 classes this year, too, same well, as we had last year. But, but that takes a long time, and sometimes it's midnight when we get finished with it. Oh, I remember. One, two o'clock in the morning. I think oh, the yeah. first one I did at two o'clock, I stumbled out of there. It's usually one or two whenever I get home each time. And I start about nine o'clock on Saturday yeah. morning. I want we to tell you. We decorate the center ring and all that. Well, there's more to all of these events, like the good old days. And people work hard on these. Sometimes they start and work year round because uh, that's what it takes. You start early. Uh, I don't think people realize. I think they think a lot of times this just happens. Yeah. It doesn't. You've it's got just to a one-day thing is what people think. Yeah, you got to take care of the ground. you got to make sure the grass is cut right. got to make sure there's enough toilet paper in the outhouses. And, <laughs> and we always run out of that. <laughs> <laughs> we try to do better. <laughs> But it's, you know, when you look, probably by the time that day's over, you think, why do I think this is fun? But then when you think about it, maybe a month or so down the road, you think, well, you know, that was pretty good. We had a, a pretty good time because there are some fun times with it. There is. And that's our largest fundraiser, too, it is. for the year. It is. And it goes to a lot of different um, charities it and does. categories uh, that, the I mean, you've got to have... Along with our charities, you also have to be able to keep up the building and this type of thing. So, you know, the money's divided up, I'm sure. But the Lions Club always makes sure that the charities that it provides for, uh, there's some money that go to those yeah, out of everything. First. It does. Now, I think the White Cane Days, it all goes to the blind, the blind doesn't it? It does. Mm -hmm. And like the Princess Ball, I think some of it goes to the uh, Diabetes Association and wherever, whatever funding that we have that it goes to. Of course, it doesn't bring in as much money as the horse show does. The horse show is a big deal. So if you'd like to have your name out there, if you'd like to see it in the, the books are really nice. And, and you get, I mean, your ad is easy to see and everything, and a lot of people pay attention to these, and a lot of out-of-town people do, too. And, you know, I just received a, um, well, it was statistics, it's from the Upper Cumberland, about the sales tax that is brought in every year. And, of course, we're up from what we were last year, but I think people need to realize that sales tax is something that everybody pays. It's not like property taxes. There's people that live and in the community don't pay property tax. But if you're traveling through here, if you stop, you pay sales tax. And this is fine. I, I think I just 
want to make the point that all of these events that we have that bring people in here from other communities that travel through Cannon County, that's a plus for us because the money they spend, they pay the sales tax. So can't gripe about that. They may not, they don't own property and they don't pay property tax, but they pay sales tax. So you need to think about that and be nice to all of your tourists because they can make your life a, a lot cheaper to live here. <laughs> it sure can. And we have a lot of people that come in from out of town for this, don't yes, we? Yes, we really do. A lot of the horses, the owners you know, uh, that come in them for them from are from out of, out out of state. state. Right. right. Okay. Talk about classes, we have 38 classes, but we have the um, um, the kids, the the stick horse class, I couldn't think what it was, the stick horse class, and those little kids, they really enjoy that. Hey, I enjoy so, watching. I know. <laughs> and some of them are from out of state, too, yeah, they, they are. <laughs> <laughs> they are. But if you're bringing your kids, just put them in the uh, stick horse class. They'll enjoy it. And they all get a ribbon. We don't choose who's the best so they all get a ribbon and we give them yeah because they have a tendency to cry yeah they do <laughs> <laughs> if they don't get they don't win. <laughs> okay was there anything else and of course we this is just this is our biggest lions yeah. club event it is but uh it's not the only one the lions club has during the year no we have Lots of different Lots things. Lots of different things. And especially around Christmas time, I always refer to the first Saturday of December <laughs> as Lions Club Day in Cannon County because they start out with pancakes with Santa. Uh, and I think last year we broke records on everything. Yeah, that, we did. The Christmas parade was probably one of the best that I've seen that we've had. And also the tour of homes, which was great. Mm -hmm. And so... That doesn't really, well, the tour of homes brings in money to us and the pancake breakfast, right. but there's no charge for the parade. So that's, that's more or less just for the community. We, we have a Christmas parade and it's not a money maker. Some things you do, you do because it's a good thing for the community, not because you're making money at it. And that's one of those things. But. Right. We have to have money to survive, but we it, do. that's not everything. <laughs> that's right. It isn't. And then all of the things that we do throughout the year, like the Princess Ball, I love that. That's one of my favorite events. Um, we don't make a ton of money with it, but I love to see the daddies and the grandpas and the little girls. And what I love most is seeing the daddies and the grandpas get out there and dance to anything because they play all kinds of music. They do the limbo, they do the bunny hop, they do it. And some of the dads, they dance when the little girls aren't even out there. I've never seen anything like that. That's, but I love that. I think that's great. And to see those little girls look up at their dad, you know. Oh, it like, is. Oh, it's just. just it's great. It, it is. It really is. <laughs> it's, of course, we feed them and everything, but they have a good time. And you got to have the strobe lights. I mean, that's just part of it. So. It is. Anyway, these are just a couple of the events. Uh, we have the White Cane Days, which everybody knows. White Cane's been around since the beginning of time. We have the Coats for Cannon. And uh, this isn't something that we make money at, but it's something for the community, and that's for people to come and get a coat and hat and gloves. Um, and socks. Some of them, socks. Some of them are new, and some of them are gently used, you know, but you can come, if you need a coat or shoes, or I mean socks or gloves or hats, um, we have two days that we do that in November. So that's a good thing too. So see there, we do good things yeah, for the community too. People have really, <laughs> they really enjoy getting those coats. Yeah, they you. do. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, if you're cold, you <laughs> that's right. Come get a coat. That's all right. Or, uh, you know, who would think that people would get so excited about socks? But there are people that don't have socks, and especially little kids, and it breaks my heart uh -huh. because <laughs> it does. But there are. People do that. Lois, we thank you. You're a hard worker. Oh, the Lions Clubs thank you, if they haven't told you that. 
They well, should, because you do a lot for the Well, lines, I enjoy it, and I've been doing it a long time. I started registering horses before I was even a member. <laughs> <laughs> they just call you in here and take I, they you to did. do this. I remember Floyd Alexander. You remember Floyd? Mm -hmm. He was in the Lions Club big, and he always registered horses. So one night I got a call, and he said, you know, are you going to the horse show? And I said, yes. And he said, stop by the registration booth. We need you. So I've been registering horses, I think, ever you, since then. You know, you brought up a point there. I remember when the Lions Club, women weren't allowed to join oh, the Lions yes. Club. And I was the first lady lion. Well, see there, and they've worked your tail off ever since. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was the first uh, lady president of the Lions Club. Ooh, well, there, we have all these yeah. firsts. Oh, I've got to tell this. Um, a lot of you may not remember Clark Turney. I do. But some of you do. But anyway, um, the first meeting I went to, he came over and sat by me. And we was having dinner, and he said, uh, he stood up and he said, well, I want everyone to know it's a lot better to smell cologne than it is aftershave. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to tell you, I'll tell you what I thought when I heard that. And I thought, yeah, these guys need some people that are going to work, and they're going to bring the ladies in. <laughs> also had one line member that quit because I was president of the Lions Club. Well, he just needed to get over it. <laughs> and he never came back. <laughs> See, he was one of those that didn't want to work anymore. So he did. He just quit. That's silly, isn't it? It is. It is silly. Thank you, All right. Lois, for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, you didn't think I was going to talk to you, did you? I am. It's not, it wouldn't hurt my feelings either way. Yes, it would, and you know Oh, it come would. on now. Mark Vance, TWRA wildlife officer, and uh, he puts on an event, and of course it's only two days away, but I am going to tell you this, that it's one of my, I think this is a great, I think this is great because I think all little kids, well, big kids, <laughs> my son's group love to fish. And so I think it's important, and they put on the fishing rodeo, and it's going to be the 9th of June right. this year. Today's um, the 6th, right? I know. Yeah. And I don't know if we'll be on the air by then, but I still want people to hear this for next year because I, you do stock the river, right? We stock the river. The last five years, we've put uh, in excess of 400 pounds of catfish in the river. Really? 400 pounds. And that, now, that's on an average of one pound for fish, so some of them may less than a pound, and some of them may weigh more than a pound, but we'll put, uh, I pay for 400 pounds, and they're going to be delivered uh, the 7th, which will be tomorrow morning sometime, so we'll be unloading catfish tomorrow. Do you allow fishing down there? Uh... We, we ask that they don't, because this is primarily for the kids to fish from uh, we usually start fishing at 8 o'clock, fish till noon on the Saturday. And, and talking whether this airs before or after the event, if I always, if you could just remember this, this event always will occur on free fishing day, which is the first Saturday after the first Monday in June. <laughs> That's a squirrely way they do it. it. They Sometimes like it's that. the first Saturday in June. <laughs> yeah. Many times it's the second, but it's the first Saturday after the first Monday. So okay. this year it falls on the 9th. Uh, next year, I'm not even sure what it looks at. But anyway, we, we, we've been doing this. This is, I've been in the county, be eight years August. This is seven years we've been doing this. It just seems like it just, they just start going by by picket fence posts. It gets faster and faster. But you have a lot of children that come oh, to this. Oh, there's lots of kids. I'll have anywhere from 80 to 100 kids show up. Uh, usually if it's more than 80, a lot more than 80, I have a hard time for everybody having a place to right, fish. Because right. we do fish on the Dillon, Dillon Park. We fish over there on a, it's uh, basically city property. Uh, a lot of the property on the other side is kind of, uh, private. Kind of a, is private, a piece right. of it's private, and others are water plant. We're actually, by Homeland Security, not allowed to have a lot of people over there, so, mm -hmm. or any people over there. So we have to fish on the Dillon Park side, and it's from the dam all the way up to where you can see the bottom that people yeah. can fish, and people do fish, and you know. Yeah, they do. But anyway, we'll have that. We got the fish there. Everybody that comes is gonna get a goodie bag. It'll have fish and tackle, different things from here in the community. Uh, Golly, Subway, Hardee's, McDonald's, 
um, moonlight drive -in. moonlight drive in everybody sticks a little something in a goodie bag for the kid to use sometimes it may just be a order of fries or a ice cream cone or a free drink hey, a that's movie okay. pack. hey that's you know okay. but once you tally it all up you know whether you catch a fish or not it was worth going going you yeah know? so uh, I but do think about everybody. how excited they get if they do catch oh a yeah fish. If they catch a fish and you mom know, and daddy get excited for them. they get a pay, they, they start catching fish pictures are being taken and they're going to be in the uh, they're going to be putting a paper, so that's that's pretty neat. You know, there you because are. the paper always used to give me half the front page and another full page in the back to, for these kids to be in there with their catch. So and see, I think that's great. Oh yeah, oh, I yeah. think that's a good thing. You know, and and I and I start getting asked in January and February, you having a rodeo? Yeah. <laughs> you know it. You know. Well, I, if I didn't do it, they'd run me out of town on a rail. So I. But better. then, just think about it. After it's over. Then it's open fishing for anyone. That's right. right? Afternoon at 12 o'clock. All right, have at it, folks. And everybody's got their rods there waiting. So <laughs> as soon as the kids, as soon as I say go, everybody else just goes fishing. And that's free fishing day. You don't even have to have a license to fish yeah. that day. Now all the all the all other regulations hold. You know, size and creel limit. On catfish, though, there's not uh, as far as the size or creel limit. As far as the number that you can keep. But you know, I do ask people to take what you need. And, Leave, right. leave some for somebody else. But that's, it's, that's a pretty neat thing. It is, and I love it. Um, one other thing I wanted to touch on while you're here. Um, you know, I've heard, well, you hear on the news all the time about how many people have drowned mm. on the lakes, and some of them weren't wearing life jackets. Um. Uh, PFDs, personal flotation dives, life jackets. They, these things are such a unique tool uh, in the state. Uh, if you're on a boat, it, the law requires that uh, every vessel has, for the number of people that's on board, has the proper number of life, life jackets. jackets. Now these are of proper size and fit. Now if it's an old ratty one that's been stuck back under the gunnel for 10 years and won't latch and won't tie, that, that's, that's that not any good. Count. That's right. <laughs> but everybody's supposed to have one. Now the, the law says available to them or readily available. They don't have to have it on. Um, but I look at PFDs like I do seat belts in a car. If you're wearing it 99, no, I'll say 999 times out of 1,000, it will save your life if you're in an accident. Let me ask you this. So many of these, and I hear, they'll say, well, they fell out of the boat and they didn't come back up. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, do you get tangled up in something? Do you get... <clears throat> Usually, I thought even if you're drowning, you'll come up at least one time. <laughs> uh, there's so many. There's so many different factors that go into a body or a person drowning. Um, it can be on the the you know body mass, body weight. Uh, a person, you know, I'll say it. You know, I'm a pretty hefty fellow. I've got a lot of fat on my body. You're I'll gonna sink. I'll, you? No, no. Actually, I'll <laughs> float a little better than most people. If they are very lean and don't have a lot of fat, they're, you know, and, and it's kind of a, not a, that big, big a thing. But it, it's it's just many, many different factors. You know, you hear that they jumped off the cliff, they went under, they never came back mm -hmm. up. Or they saw them swimming, they were swimming fine, they went under, and they never come back up. Many of those situations, we don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they could have had a cramp, went under. If they fill their lungs with water and all the wet air is out, that's, going, that's not going to allow them to come back to the surface real easy. If you've got lungs full of air when you hit the water, you're going to be more buoyant and you're going to come back up. Uh, there's so many different factors, you know. In, 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 in any of those factors, though, it's a tragic situation for the family that's remaining, for looking for a person that's still in the water. So. I guess the point I wanted to make was to just wear what that's you're it. supposed to do. Do what you're supposed to yeah, that, do. I go back to that 9, 999 times out of a thousand. If you're wearing that life jacket, most of the, you know, nearly every time, it's going to save your life. If you get thrown out of the boat or whatever, there's certain situations where you have to have them on. If you're if you're skiing, if you're riding a tube, if you're within 500 yards of a dam, you have to have them on. Uh, all kids 12 and under must have a life jacket on while the boat is moving, whether it's a big motor, whether it's a trolling motor, whether it's just a drift. If they're anchored or tied off, the kids don't have to have it on. 
but uh, you know, it's not a law that if you're over 12 that you have to have it on at all times except certain situations, but we know that it, it's a proven lifesaver to wear those life jackets, and I appreciate you. Well, I just heard so much of that this year, and I thought, you know, I don't know what the reasoning for a lot of them were, you know, I don't know if it was, but if life jackets are going, it's kind of like wearing seat belts. Mm -hmm. If seat belts are going to save your life, then put your seat belt on. That just, to me, that's a no brainer. That just yeah. makes common see, sense. See, we've got a law that states that while you're in a car, you've got to have it on. But uh, just the law for the PFDs, you've got to have it available. You don't have to have it on, unfortunately. Well, there's a law you don't talk on your cell phone either. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That doesn't always <laughs> the case. Can I talk um, about bears a minute? Yeah. Last night I was watching the news, and in the last 48 I hours, per hour that. Left, we had a bear spotted on Tennessee Tech campus in Cookville. Oh, I didn't know that. And then one just north of there near Livingston crossed the four lane highway I heard that. on the way into Livingston. Uh, I get, or I have had in the past, I guess what I'll call them. I can't substantiate them, but I think it was good information where somebody saw a bear in Cannon County. Uh, they're on the Cumberland Plateau, which we know that if you go uh, up on the, if you if you went to West Side School and look what, east, you're going to see the Cumberland Plateau. So those bears are in easy walking distance of here. We could very easily see those a, a bear here. Uh, and I guess the biggest thing that I want to bring out about this: if you do see a bear, don't get out there and try to take a selfie with. <laughs> You know, take a picture from afar. Well, you know that's going to happen. Well, that, that'll that happen, you know. And I do appreciate it. I would appreciate a phone call. You know, am I looking forward to hey, bears being be here? you'd be the first one I'd call. <laughs> you know, it, it's, you know, we know they're going to be here uh, at some point in time. We don't know how many bigger numbers they're going to be here. Uh, but, I, I, one, I need to know. That way I can report it to Nashville. Hey, I've got a bear in the county. Nothing's going to change other than I'm going to try to monitor where it's at and what it's doing. Now, if it starts causing problems, then things may have to change. I may have to change the mindset, but I just want to know that it's here, be able to document it want you to and verify it. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, don't approach them. They're not like some of the bears in the Smokies in Cades Cove. You can get out there and take pictures, which you're not even supposed to do that. But these are going to be more wild bears, uh, not going to run up and attack you unless you're out there harassing it or whatever. So. Take, take your picture and call me, that's all I You know, I went to Yellowstone Park one time and there's signs every 20 feet that right. says, do don't, not feed don't the bears. Don't feed the bears, that's right. And if you see them on the side of the road, don't get out and go over there. And like you say, I, the selfies weren't around them, but right. they were taking pictures. You'd see families with little kids and the traffic would be lined up for miles. Yep. yep. And here'd be a bear, some of them with babies, now that you're asking for trouble there, mm -hmm. and people would be out there in the middle of the road trying to get across to them if they were on the other side, right. mm -hmm. where they could get a close-up. Yeah, that's now, not that's not a good thing to do with a bear. No, <laughs> they are the. But I've seen it in Cades Cove too. Yeah, well, you know they. I've are, seen them get out and chase them. There are there they are our, our largest <coughs> carnivore that we have here in the eastern United States. Of course, we've had uh, you know we have the. Random call about the mountain lion. The last substantiated mountain lion sighting we had in the state of Tennessee was in September of 2016, coming up on two years ago. So we've not had any, we've had reports, but nothing else substantiated. Couldn't verify that it was actually a mountain lion. But, uh, you know, the bears, a bear call, that's, that's a serious, you know, I say, I, I take it serious in that, you know, yes, I believe you saw a bear. I'd like to know where and I'd like to be able to verify. Oh, but anyway, there's that. Just make sure they weren't drinking the night that, before. Well, yeah, we we won't get into that. Well, I want to tell you a snake story. And you're you, always telling me snakes. I know you're usually wanting to, me to look at them. <laughs> I don't want to look at them, but I have had some leg problems that I've had to have some surgery on. So mm -hmm. I was at home. I went out to water my flowers, and our hose is on a reel at the back of the house. How I didn't see this, I don't know. But I walked over there, I turned on the faucet, I reached down to get the hose, and not this far away, this snake raised up. Now, Mark? How, how high did you jump? 
jump. <laughs> and I, I had a hurt leg. <laughs> I think I actually ran. I didn't even know I could. But I want to tell you, it, I was this far from grabbing that snake's head. It was right down there with the hose. Mm -hmm. If I would have grabbed that snake and pulled it out in the yard like I do the hose, I'd have been wearing the pins for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> there are, I, I know people that will hurt themselves I, I'm one of them. getting away from the snake worse than the snake could ever harm them at all. This snake was not the least bit afraid of me. Right. You know how usually they'll run off. Mm -hmm. Not this one. Well, then I, when I did grab the hose, thank goodness, and not the snake. But when I turned around, I thought, was I seeing what I thought I saw? Mm -hmm. Well, then I seen the rest of it. Yeah, he was, you saw that much to start with, and then he was like, he, so oh, big. Oh, yes, he yeah. was. He well, was. And he was under the this reel where the hose was, but he, he wasn't in any hurry to get away from me. And so I'm, I'm hollering at my husband, who was <laughs> down at the barn, and believe me, I'm hollering. And he thought, because he was down there working on equipment, and he had something running, and he couldn't really hear me. So he thought I was calling him to supper. <laughs> I thought, get up I'll here be there in a now. While. <laughs> well, it took him 10 minutes to find the shovel. But he came up, and he took the snake on down and turned him loose somewhere down there. If he shows up again, I'm calling you. Okay, that'll be fine, too. Anyway, he goes, it's just a chicken snake. I, it doesn't matter to me. I don't want to be introduced a to it. A snake is a snake is a, a snake, right? That's it. Yeah. That's it, but well, that's, you know, that's, I did want to tell you that snake story because he probably was a good five foot long. Yeah, uh, the, and his body was probably that big. Around. Yeah, yeah, the other the gray rat snakes, uh, they they can which it's what everybody calls a chicken snake. You see them in a chicken coop, see them in a chicken house, wherever. And, and, and this a ranch. one was up at my house. <clears throat> and that's you know, and it's uh, there, we got three black snakes that are all thrown into that category. The black racer. The, the gray rat snake and the king snake. Of course, the king snake, he's immune to the, the venom of the rattlesnake and the copperhead that we have around here. So he, he actually eats snakes. So people, you know, but anyway. That's I'm trying a, to remember this when this happens. And this <laughs> one was gray and black. Yeah, they, if they got kind of the dark bands across the top, that's the gray rat snake. But they're, all snakes are good to have around, but they will scare you sometimes. And, you know, so, my, sometimes wife was, I, my, my, my wife was gathering eggs. Breathe. My <laughs> wife was gathering eggs and it's kind of dark back in the hen house, you know, and she, she just about reached in there and there was one in there coiled up that had just eaten three of her eggs. She was ready to kill it, but, you know, she came got me and I took it elsewhere to, you know, go live somewhere else. I can't else. even kill them. I mean, I, somebody else, <laughs> I couldn't watch somebody else do it, but I can't. Yeah. But it, that really got my attention. Yeah. How hard is this travel? Come in here, Marsha. I've had you sitting back here. I'm here for you. Marsha Pater, she runs the library. Yes, she uh, does. Snakes travel. Sit right uh, here. They're not going to travel from a long range. Uh, if, if they find a place where food is plentiful, uh, they may not. They may not move the area of a football field in their lifetime. Okay. You know, if they're around barns, uh, like my place, I've got uh, a few uh, a few chickens where the, the mice are going to be around where the, you store food. Uh, they're going to be around that area, but they're not going to move over the size of Football, football field about like maybe a, 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 the the eastern box turtle would same thing they live their entire life they, in the area the size of a football field so I had a snake in my house mm. about a month ago oh my yeah. I would don't say that to Carolyn I would she doesn't know they can get you the house, house. <laughs> I woke up, my cat was playing with something, woke me oh. up, and it was a snake. Mm -hmm. Well, I put a box over it, and I called a friend. <laughs> Steve, Steve came, and he lifted the box, and he said, there's no snake. Oh, no. And so it was loose in the house for worse. two weeks. Oh, boy. So do they know where they came in so they'd go back out? So uh, I didn't if think it was so a either. small snake, he's eating insects, and he may have, how old a house oh. have you got? Uh... An older home or newer home. It's been there a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because there's places probably where he oh. maybe got under the foundation and up in the, I've had one in my house years ago when I lived in Nashville, and they'll find places. What? Well, yes, they'll get in your house, Miss Carolyn, if they get the opportunity. But anyway. <laughs> but can they get out? Yeah. They can, you know, they, they'll get <laughs> out. Did you ever find him in the tube? Yes. You I, did find I, him. I, you're not going to like the that. The hard way. I put sticky paper down. Okay. Well, that's... <laughs> I 
would have had I, I it online. Understand. I could not imagine, you know, you know, it's, you know, any, you know, I, I understand. That's, it, you got to do what you got to do. It, he was in there two weeks, yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know. I would have had it they'll try to, They'll try to find a way out, but, you know, yeah. if they're finding something to eat and they're finding water, uh, that's, you know, that's what you're running to. If they got right. food and they got water, they're happy. And they like, and I didn't realize they did insect, they ate insects. Yeah, the, the smaller snakes eat a lot of insects. Okay. Yeah, they do, they do. Oh, yeah, that's, I'm uh, so that's sorry, what, Marcia. I wouldn't I have, I wouldn't I have been right for I, sure. I, 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 I got to say one more, on. yeah, I'm going to say one more thing and I'll hush and I'll let you get, talk to Miss Marcia, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how much time we got left. Uh, Lots, we got a little time. Baby what? deer. Oh yeah, I love them. They are them. being born right now. A lot, I've already gotten three or four different phone calls from people. And they're cutting hay. Oh, they're cutting hay. Well, this guy actually saw one. He didn't kill it. Didn't have any problem with it. But as as he was cutting, the area of the hay that was still standing kept getting smaller, and it kept running around in there. And he actually stopped, got off, and ran it away from where he was cutting. And lo and behold, there was mother waiting on it. So you know. But he said it was just tiny, not much bigger than a house cat, which that's true. Oh. Most of the time when they're born. Seven, eight, ten pounds is a big oh. deer for a little fawn. I mean, you I know, they're know just that. tiny. They may only stand 18 inches tall, very small, slender. Mm -hmm. uh, but the key to it is, I'll get a lot of phone calls. I have found this baby deer. What do I do with it? And my absolute answer every time, put it right Leave back it where you found it. <laughs> Leave it alone. Uh, the mother, the, the mother, the doe, when she has that little one, while that deer is still suckling, she will take that phone, put it somewhere out of the way where she thinks it's safe. It may be at the edge of your backyard. It may be in a field. It may be in a wood line. It may be, you know, just somewhere that she feels safe. Lay it down. And she's going to go away. She's going to go and eat and drink and build up her milk stores again. And then she'll come back two or three hours later, let it suckle, move it again, go away. And that process will continue until that phone starts to eat. And then it will fo follow its mother. Now, until it starts eating, it has no smell. Dogs can walk downwind of it and never smell it. The only time that a dog or a coyote or some sort of predator might find it is if they physically step on it. Yeah. Oh, the fawn doesn't the smell. The fawn doesn't smell. I mean, they will, you, you, I have found them in the woods and you can walk up and you can just, if that microphone, you can take a picture right there and all they'll do is move their nose and roll their eyes at you. <laughs> they will not move an inch. I want and that And you picture. think, oh, they've been abandoned. It's starving. It can't even move. It's so hungry. People pick them up, bring them home. That's that's its natural ability right there. So mm -hmm. the key to the whole thing is if you find a baby deer, regardless of where it's at, leave it alone. Now, there have been a couple of situations where the mother has been, you know, we have deer fatalities on the road. I've already had one of those this year. Now, that's a different circumstance, and we'll, we'll do what needs to be done with that. Other than that, if you find a baby deer, a phone with spots, leave it right where you found it. Because if you pick it up and carry it carry it inside and you kept it for 30, 40 minutes, an hour, mama comes back and looking for it, she's gonna start searching for it. And it, she may not be in that same general area, but she's gonna keep looking. But you take it back to that exact spot or pretty close where you can, and they'll actually bleed. If you, you've heard of a goat, a baby goat or something mm -hmm. like that, you know, they do the same thing, and they'll call to one another, and they'll come together. I knew they make a noise. Yeah. Ninety-nine but... times out of a hundred, everything's going to work out fine. You know, mom will find baby. We just ask that you to leave them in the woods. Let let them take care of themselves. And that's I what think we this have. snake I found could have probably eat that baby deer. Oh. <laughs> it's big enough. <laughs> but anyway, I've had a lot to talk about. You have, and that's good. That's why I have you on here because you. I'll talk, talk about fishing. <laughs> I'll talk about fishing too. I'm doing a presentation. It's going to, I'm thinking I'm going to try to get it rescheduled. My mother got sick about, well, actually nearly a month ago today. She had a stroke, but she's doing fine, doing well back at home. Uh, but I had to cancel a presentation I was going to do at the senior center on the fishes of Tennessee. Everybody knows the bass uh, and the catfish. I was going to talk a little bit about them, but the, there's little fish that are over, aren't over three or four inches long that are the most beautiful creatures on this planet. And we actually have some of them here in the county. I'm going to do that presentation. How'd they get here? Or have they been here? They were here before we were here. Oh. And we just got here and mud I don't know if I've muddled seen things them. up. Well, come see my presentation. I'll, <laughs> in, I'll introduce you to the log perch. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do it up here at the senior center. I try and to do one up there and one with y'all. I try to. And when apart. is that? When, yeah, I'm gonna, I've not got it scheduled, scheduled, oh. but I'm going to look at the last Thursday in June. 
which is going to be what the 21st no the 28th 28th yeah yeah i have port here but i want to try to do it the 28th of june we're going to have the first responders here that day at 11. Mm, i'm going to do mine before that i think Y'all work it out. <laughs> we'll figure something out anyway. But anyway, the Fishes of Tennessee, that's going to be the last Thursday in this month over there. All right. It's a senior center. I'm, I'm going to put that down. All right. And you'll let me know what time? Yes. Okay. I just want to remind everybody that if you see this before the 9th, fishing tournament. And what is the it's age not a tournament group? Now. I'm sorry. It's the rodeo. It's the rodeo. Uh, what time does this take? What age of kids? Ages do from fish? well, holding a fishing rod to twelve years old. Okay. Okay. Over twelve, you can fish after lunch. Okay. But uh, if they can hold a fishing rod, one two year old, that's fine. That's good. I have no grief. Yeah, a lot that. of twelve year olds have probably been fishing the lake. Oh yeah, for a that's long true. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I want kids up to twelve to be able to fish without any hindrance from any adult, and that's what that is. And we'll start fishing at eight o'clock. Uh, free hot dogs. Uh, drinks. Uh, Mike Alexander is going to come cook for us because he's oh, done right. the last few Great. years. Uh, we'll have drinks, chips, water, uh, fun. What did I always say? Fun. Does the American Legion still help you? That's with right. This? No, I help them. Okay, you help them. All right. <laughs> I just provide the fish. Sorry. They take care of everything else. So, <laughs> but no, the American Legion Post Seventy Nine. That, that they're a wonderful uh, group to yeah, that I'm, but that to come out and help. So, well, this is one of those good things that we do. Really yeah. good things, yeah. and it really doesn't cost anything. Mm -hmm. So they weren't doing it for the monetary value value of it. It's just a good time and something for the community to do. That's it. Come on so, out and go fishing. There you go. Thank you for being with us. And the next time that huge snake show, a football field, that means he could show up again up there, huh? Uh huh. And he's not afraid of me. Well, I won't say he's not afraid of you. He was he probably wasn't. he was probably being very still, not to draw your attention. He raised his head up, and it was in my face. Now, he, he didn't care if I saw him. Did he try to bite you? No. Okay, then he was. But I know. didn't stick around long enough well, to okay. see. You know, everybody says, will a, will a, will a, will a, a non-venomous snake bite you? Yes, to defend themselves, they will bite you. It's not going to hurt you, but, you know, they'll bite it you. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The fact that he touched me would have been. <laughs> yeah, that would, you just fell over right there and started quivering, I guess. <laughs> it really I'm would, because I'm, I'm scared, scared to death of them. Yeah. I don't mind telling you, and I don't care what they are. I don't care. <laughs> I guess I care if they eat poisonous snakes, but Lord help me. I hope I don't go out there and see that happening, because I'll never work in the flowers again. I just know. I thought that was going to be one of those depends days anyway. <laughs> It was bad, but I think your story's worse, Marcia. I have one in the house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would get oh, yeah. my attention. Okay, Miss Marcia. Well, how much time do we have? We got about five minutes. Five minutes. Um, real quick, we have started our um, summer reading program, and, um, and and this goes with your speaker earlier, Amanda. Right. I have some puppies and cats that I have to oh. give away to. Oh, everybody <laughs> wants one of those. Yeah, everybody wants so, um, Oh, I love that one. What we <laughs> Read a book. Read a book in these years. Sam, I can do the, this. The same I am count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we put on the summer reading program to encourage children to keep reading, find a love for reading during the summer, and um, in, in doing that, um, if they read a book or read for so many minutes a day, they fill out a reading log and then they can get a little prize. Oh, well, I'd like one of those little prizes. Yep. Everybody, every kid likes stuffed yes. animals. And, um, and for adults, <laughs> can have, have a big one? Oh, well, well there you go. We oh, yeah. have a, a tumbler with the Adams Moore Library on it. All right. All right. Nice. Well, so everybody have, use one of those. Yeah, we too. have it from the birth up to adults. And uh, you just, it's free. Everything is always free at the library. And um, this, tomorrow, tomorrow, John Soloway is going to come. Now, he played on mm -hmm. your program, what, a month ago, two months right. ago? Right, right. Um, he's going to do a 
hour of music for the children and it's some singing along and he's going to teach a little bit about the history of music, maybe make a percussion instrument. All the kids will take it home. John's great. Very yeah. talented. And so that's tomorrow at 11 a.m. And then uh, next Thursday on the 14th, we have Nashville Zoo coming and bringing some animals. Nice animals yeah. Oh, well, that's good, so, too. And um, we go all the way to July 19th. We have flyers at the library you can pick up. Okay, wait so. a minute here. On the 23rd, we got a few minutes here. On the 23rd is Jill Thatcher, and that's the puppet storyteller. Right, and that's Saturday. We have just right. a couple of Saturdays. June 28th is the first responders. Mm -hmm. They all love that. Yes. All the kids love that. July 12th is Mr. Barry and Sam the Turtle. And he's a puppeteer, storyteller, singer. July 14th is Making Waves, and that's mm -hmm. science and sound and vibration. And then on July 19th is a pizza party to celebrate everyone that does their reading logs and keeps there up you with go. it. Mm -hmm. There you go. So. And you know, this is another thing. This is something for your kids to do in the summer. Mm -hmm. You need to take them and be with them, but this is free. Mm -hmm. This is just for your, just for the community. Library has a lot of uh, other great avenues that you can research while you're there. But, um, yeah, we thank you, and we want. I also want to thank you for the use of the library for this last week because they're having conservatory at the art center, and they use the whole art center when they do that. So I have to search for other places to have our meetings and events, and this has been a great place. The library is a great place, but we do thank you, thank you. for sharing with us. We thank you for coming on and talking to us about everything. Bears. Can you imagine? You look out there and see a bear running across that. It isn't because something's in your drink. Call him. <laughs> Tell him that there's a bear out there. Uh, the Art Center, the 18th through the 29th, is the second uh, junior Youth Conservatory. The first one is going on right now. And then the senior one starts July 9th through the 20th. June 16th is Yuzu will perform, and they are a tribute band to uh, U2. Probably these are not ones that I'm real familiar with, but the younger set will be. Um, July 6th through the 21st, you love this. Mu the musical Greece will be center stage at the Art Center. And let's see, we went over the rodeo cruise in. I had to cancel the one in May due to um, rain, which I don't think it rained, but the computer was saying it, it was, was going to rain yeah. every hour. So, but now we're still planning for the next one. It'll be June 23rd, and that's on the square. 4 to 7.30, we invite everyone. Uh, all cars, trucks are welcome. We have a good time with that. And then the 4th of July concert is going to be on the 4th of July, even though it's Wednesday. It will be at Dillon Park. And it will. the events will start during the day. The American Legion is having some entertainment, and they're inviting food booths to set up. They'll have games. Uh, for the kids and everything, and then the fireworks always begins at when at darkness. But I will advise you that if you're coming out there, be sure <laughs> spray your kids with tick and chigger spray and everything because ticks are bad. Yep. And let's see, the next one will be the Lions Club Walking Horse Show, and that'll be on July 7th. And everybody's welcome to come to that. If you like horses, you're going to see something you like. We're out of time. We appreciate you watching, and we will be with you again in July.